What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of SMIE videos. So today I want to continue with the short video series that I was doing on basic networking with pretty much the next video that's going to be in line which is switching right. Hopefully this is going to be interesting to y'all and I hope you guys like the content but stick around let's get to it. All right so what exactly is switching? Well if you're following from my previous video you would have remembered me talking about routing and then I mentioned that routing is the ways or Google Maps of the computing world. Well if routing is the ways or Google Maps then switching is definitely the car. Now in simple terms switching can be defined as basically the process in which data or packets are transferred from one area of the network to, ne to the next or transferred across the network. Basically, there are three different types of switching technologies. The first one is called circuit switching. Now, circuit switching is the kind of technology that your telephone networks use. So if you remember landlines, I mean, if you're familiar with landlines, then that type of system, that type of network, landline networks, use that technology called circuit switching. Now, some cell phone networks use circuit switching as well, but not so much because now people are kind of matriculating to the more advanced and faster networks like packet switch networks. And that's pretty much where we are now on cell phone networks, though there are some some elements of cell phone networks that still work on the circuit switch networks when they want to connect back to the PSDN and so forth. As I mentioned, packet switching, that's actually the second type of switching, right? So the second type of switching that we're going to talk about or that exists is called packet switching, which is the faster of all of the switching methodologies around. Packet switching allows you to move more data in packets over your network and allows you to utilize data demanding services like video calling and so forth which is why cell phones kind of switch to the whole packet switching thing packet switching is definitely the more modern method or the method that more modern type computing systems and so on use these days now the last type of switching technology that exists right now is a technology called message switching or also known as store and forward switching system essentially because it stores the information before it forwards it and after so that it can do checks on it and so on yeah so that's that's the next type of switching method that exists that method is actually used mostly by like your email systems and your voicemail systems though like at this point maybe more so your voicemail systems use that kind of switching method because emails have also moved to the whole packet switching um, type of methodology of moving data as opposed to the, the message switching because um, it's faster right everybody's moving to the faster thing but generally that's what message switching is about so you use that methodology when you with your voicemail systems and your email systems now there are a number of ways that we can think about switching right but let's stick with the car analogy for the time being. So, if circuit switching is a 94 Corolla, I'm just giving it a year here for 94 Corolla sake. But let's say circuit switching is a 94 Corolla. Then packet switching or message switching would definitely be a Honda Integra. And then packet switching would be the Mitsubishi Evolution. In other words, it's the fastest of the bunch and it allows you to do a whole lot more. Now there's a whole history behind the development of switching technologies, but I'm not going to discuss that here. I'll leave that for somebody much smarter than me to explain that to you. Plus there are tons of videos out there that you can find this kind of information in. But it's safe to say that with modern switching technologies like packet switching, a whole lot more has become possible. Now, one of the interesting things that's happening now is that developments in modern switching technologies as well as modern data transfer mediums like you know, fiber optic cables have allowed for advancements in domestic data transfer speeds, right? 
most home ISPs now provide internet services at one gigabit per second and that's unheard of like it was unheard of back in the day and you imagine if you're familiar with dial-up you know dialing and hearing that 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 sound you know so many of us from that era are familiar with you understand what I'm talking about one gigabit per second man crazy crazy fast but there is even faster data transfer speeds out there because of these enhancements these advancements in in modern switching technologies and modern transfer mediums like the fiber optic cable because now there are data transfer speeds of up to 390 terabits per second like give it a minute let it sink in yeah now 319 terabits per second i'm not sure that's ever going to be a home thing like i'm not sure your isp is ever going to provide that that's a record that's held by a college i can't remember the name of somewhere but yeah can you imagine that kind of data transfer speed like imagine the amount of downloads that you can get to with that and unlike with old switching technology where you can only have one way communication at a time on any device otherwise there'd be a bunch of collisions and lost data or data corruption and network failures packet switching has allowed for the implementation of multiple broadcast and collision domains using the same device now what does that mean well it means you can talk back and forth on any network traffic can go back and forth simultaneously it doesn't have to go one way first and then wait and then the next way yeah no why is that important exactly well think single lane bridge over a 500 foot drop into a river with crocodiles and piranha yeah anyways so back to basic so what does this look like well it pretty much looks like this remember this diagram this is the simple network topology diagram that we had shown you in the routing video right all right so in this diagram you have a few items what we talked about before was your router which is this diagram this little item right here now what we're talking about is your switch which sits here in your network topology it's this little item right here now this is a topological representation of a switch but for a more real life representation this is what your switch is gonna look like now you have multiple types of switches with a number of different ports like switches can come with a, a lot of ports on them this is a small business switch or basically one of the lower end switches um it has the least amount of ports are well not maybe maybe you can find switches that have less ports than this but it doesn't have a lot of ports this is a typical eight port small business type switch but your switches generally have this kind of configuration so you have your amount of ports whatever amount of ports that come on your switch and you can plug in the amount of devices according to the amount of ports um, that are available on the switch and yeah, your switch takes care of all of your switching and packet forward needs on your network. Now, one of the key differentiators with the switching and routing is that while routers that do routing may forward traffic based on the IP address, switching actually forwards traffic based on your something called your MAC address, which technically you can just consider that as the, the ID of the device that you're using. Now, packet switching goes even further in that it allows you to create something called a virtual LAN interface or a VLAN. And what you can do with a VLAN is you can tag ports on a switch to a VLAN and then it basically segments those ports and puts them in their own zone. So in other words, think of your switch as like a big train right so you know a train has multiple train cars and whatsoever so you switch is one big train with a bunch of different train cars and people can get into whichever train car they want to to travel to their destination now add a vlan to one of those train cars 
and then that train car becomes its own little train now the downside to that though is that no everybody can't walk up and down freely on the train anymore like they were before no you don't have the same kind of access to the cars that were on the train like you did before where you could just walk from one car to another right and what that means is say you left your granny on train car number one and now you're in train car number three and it's its own train you're gonna need some way to communicate with granny or get to granny because obviously you're now your own train you're not gonna get to her like that like you used to you're gonna need some kind of door or bridge or something enter vlan routing mind blown i can tell but that's more of an advanced topic so back to basics again most domestic home networks aren't going to be segmented like what you saw in the diagram that we showed right with your switch separate from your router separate from your modem in fact if you remember from the routing video where i showed you one of the typical devices or the typical style of devices that the service provider will provide you where you have all of those functions in one your modem your router your switch your wi-fi everything is in one device that's typically going to be your home network setup this design where everything is segmented and you have your router and your switch and your wi-fi and everybody separate and apart in their own devices that's typically the design that you're going to find in a corporate network setup but that doesn't mean that switching is not happening in your home as i mentioned on your service provider device you're gonna see a couple ports that may be at the back of it and those ports essentially function as switch ports depending on the type of device so some of these devices will have coax connections that come in from your service provider and then they have fast ethernet ports that go out and that's what functions as your switch ports or some will have fiber connections come in fast ethernet ports go out or some maybe they'll have a, a, a fast ethernet connection that come in and in fast ethernet that goes out right so there there are differences but take for example your wi-fi router if you have a wi-fi router at home like most people have a wireless router right if you look on the back of your wi-fi router any port that doesn't say internet or it doesn't say one that is essentially a switch port that you can plug your devices into pretty neat right yeah i think so it's it's fairly okay now, there's a whole lot more that we can say about switching. Like switching is a broad topic, much like routing and every other topic that we'll cover in this short series. Um, and we're definitely gonna get into some of that stuff later on down the line when we attack more advanced type videos like VLAN tagging and trunking versus access and port security and stuff like that. But this is all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't as yet, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any updates that we post. Join me on the next video when I talk about the last in this three part short series of fundamental networking concepts, which is going to be security. But until then, I'll catch you guys soon.